Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to create contacts in Salesforce using Data Input Wizard in NPSP specifically. Often we have clients who come to us and they say, hey Julia, we need to create these contacts uh, in Salesforce. Uh, can you help us out? Uh, we sure we can, uh, but I think it's much easier if you guys uh, know how to do it yourself. So uh, here is my tutorial how to create contacts in Salesforce specifically in NPSP. So before creating any contacts or any other records in Salesforce, it's very important to be familiar with the fields that you are trying to populate when creating the records. It's very important what fields are mandatory uh, because if you don't uh, create records with those fields, they will not be created. So for, for example, here in my demo org, I have my contact record, Greg Raw, and what is uh, mandatory is marked with asterisk, so the last name is mandatory, and I also have gender that is mandatory for all the records that I would create. And as you know, in NPSP, uh, the account name, which is a household name, is created automatically if you do not have, uh, if it's left blank. So in our case, we will leave it blank in order to uh, the households to be created automatically. We will populate the salutation, first name, last name, a gender, and uh, phone numbers and addresses. And uh, we will also create an update record to the same load. So here is my record, and uh, what you would need is uh, a CSV. Well, first I always start with Excel. So here is the template that I start putting together in which I'll uh, walk you through the fields. As you can see, I have um, salutation, first name, last name, and other fields that I would like uh, my contacts to have. And you can add your own fields, for example, preferred language or any other check boxes. It's how you enter them will depend on the data type of that field. But in, the all, in, in essence, um, minimally, you need to have this kind of information for your donors or your volunteers or constituents. Um, so pretty straightforward uh, salutation. Uh, this is a drop down pick list in order for me not to have any records. I always uh, have my Salesforce open and I see what some of the values that I have, especially when it's a pick list and not a uh, free text field. So here I'm creating Mr. and Miss and MS uh, as my salutation, first name, last name, my email field, uh, which is an NPSP, it's a little special because it will look at what is preferred to email, whether it's work or home. So here uh, I have preferred email uh, and email field, but I also have a couple of email, other email fields. The same thing for the phone number my uh, address uh, be careful if you are using drop down uh, predefined pick list uh, that your countries and your provinces are um, the same as the pick list uh, and here's a tricky part i guess somewhat tricky part i am going to create this context but i also want to affiliate them and as you will see on the record the primary affiliation is the, what we call the lookup field so i would like to affiliate um, my new contacts with a particular uh, organization I can do that once I create them for what I need to that the most secure well way is to have the record ID so if I want to associate this contact with Bell Canada yes I could write Bell Canada uh, and then look it up when I create them but I prefer to refer to the organization ID and where you can get that. You can get that once you click on the actual organization in the URL uh, of the record. So here in this case, I'm on Bell Canada. The ID of the record is uh, right here. So you can just grab that and insert it in your uh, primary affiliation and that would be the uh, ID that you're trying to connect this particular contact. So in this specific load that I'm in tutorial that I'm going to show you, we are going to create two contacts, John and Jenny. Uh, these are new contacts and Dr. Greg Raw um, 
uh, Craig Roy already exists. So I actually would like to update his information. Uh, let's say I will change his title to Mr. Uh, because right now he is a doctor in my organization. Um, so here he is. And I would also like to, uh, let's say, add him a primary affiliation as to others. And we're going to put him into Bell Canada affiliation as well. So all I have to do is just copy this ID and put this on this row. Uh, so here I'm ready to, I'm just going to save my Excel file. And now I'm going to save it as a CSV. So here, I'm just going to put it on my desktop, uh, save it as a CSV. As such, and I'm going to um, close this file. So the wizard is available in the setup menu, and you need to be an administrator clearly in order to access it, but it's right here. I'm going to go to setup and then just simply type wizard and you want data import wizard and here you will click on launch the wizard there's a few options and you can see what you can do with the wizard you can create standard objects some of the standard object and uh, custom objects so in our case contacts and accounts the standard object so i'm going to select this option and i'm going to choose this the last option where I'm going to add new uh, and update existing records. So I'm adding two new records and I'm updating an existing record. So here I want to match by contact by email. What does that mean? That means when I will be creating um, uh, creating new contacts or updating new contacts, the Salesforce will check uh, based on the email if these contacts already exist and using the email. You can also use Salesforce ID or name. Uh, I chose in this, connect, in this case to use email. Uh, I'm going to match IDs uh, account by Salesforce IDs and that's pretty much, uh, there's other fields that you can map and set as you work with the wizard. Um, so now I'm going to grab my CSV file that I just saved so you can drag and drop it. Uh, not the Excel, but the CSV, which is right here. And there you go. And I'm going to click next. And now I here Salesforce maps them for me. So these are my Salesforce fields. And this is what I have in my header in my file. So most of them, as you can see, they kind of match them because I did it on purpose in my, in my Excel file. I named them exactly as they appear in Salesforce. So they match. I have one field here that is not mapped. It's no problem. We just click on the map. And this is an account field, so I'm going to map it to the account uh, ID, and I have a couple of options, so actually I only one. So this is the ID of the contact, and I'm going to map that. And it shows you an example how records would be mapped. So actually, this account, this field, I'm leaving it blank because I'm expecting Salesforce to create this account for me, but yet I wanted to have it in my mapping. Next, I'm going to simply click the next button. And now Salesforce tell me that I have zero on that field. That's what I want. And I'm going to start the import. And the bulk data uh, load job page uh, will appear if I click OK. And now I see here that my job has been completed and I have three records processed. So if you have any errors, you will see it in records failed. You can always click on your view request to see what you have asked Salesforce to do. And then you can click on the results to see what Salesforce has done. So if I click on this um, spreadsheet, basically it shows me here in my uh, on this report, it tells that the first record has been created the last record our craig he was it was updated but it wasn't created because it existed already and if you have any errors they will be listed here 
So I can close that and I can actually go to Greg's record and uh, simply refresh the page, see if the changes I have done are here. So they are here. I have Mr. Uh, and he's associated to, uh, to Bell Canada now. I also made a list view on the contacts that were created today. And now I have Jenny and John created from my spreadsheet.